Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. <laughs> Starring William Conrad, the story of the violence that moved west with young America, and the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man, Matt Dillon, United States Marshal. The first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful and a little lonely. Yes, sir, there's times it can be real nice, Mr. Dillon. Oh, what can be real nice? Dodge City can. Now, take a week like this last one with fine weather and the prairie all green before the June sun scorches it and people staying out of trouble. Well, that won't last long, Chester. The trail herds are starting to roll in. Doggone it all, Mr. Dillon. You just won't never let a person pleasure himself at all. <laughs> I'm sorry, Chester. I didn't say it was always nice. I said right now it's nice. All right, Chester. I didn't mean to bust your balloon. Well, you sure done it. Well, look at there. There's young Packy Sutter. Yeah, let's go see what it's all about. My goodness, Slave's going to twist that boy's arm right off if he ain't careful. Uh, we'll get no thanks for poking our noses into a family row. Just rode into town with him, Paul. I can't see nothing you wrong in that. Uh, maybe I'll learn you to see a little different. Paul, oh, please! Uh... Hey, late. Mind your own What's business. What's the trouble? Oh, you, Marshal. That boy's getting pretty near as big as you are, Leif. If you're not careful, one of these days he's going to turn on you. He lift a hand to me just once, I'll take a horse whip and cut him to ribbons. But all I've done was to ride into town with Mr. Oh, Roll. You mean Jason Roll, Packy? Yes, sir. I met him on the trail south of the Shut creek. your mouth, boy. Now get on over the livery stable and wait for me. And whenever I'm ready to go home, you better be setting that wagon seat. You hear me? Yes, sir. All right, then. Still wet behind the ears and back talking like he was growed up. Why are you so worked up against Jason Roll, Leif? Because he's no good, that's why. I told that boy of mine two dozen times, stay shy of him. He's gonna learn to do it if I have to beat him to death. But if that's what you're figuring on, you better do it outside of Dodge. You button into a man's right to teach his family discipline, Discipline's or... one thing, but a grown man beating a boy with his fist is something else, and that's what you were doing when we walked He up. knowed what to expect. He's been told enough. Told what? Jason Rowe's pretty well liked, as far as I've ever heard. Listen, I aim to raise Packy up to be a cattleman, to take over the ranch someday, to run it with his own two hands. I aim to be proud of him. All right, sir. So I right. ain't raising him up to be no no-good book-reading poet. Just enough sense to plant a bean patch and live off in a herd of scrawny sheep. And I told that boy to stop hanging around that no-good roll. So uh, have I, Mr. Sutter. Now, how are you, Jason? Marshal. It wasn't because I don't enjoy his company that I told him to stay away, but because I knew it was making trouble for him with you. But I have no intention of trying to convince him by beating him to a pulp. <laughs> I ain't sure you're man enough. I am sure, though. That's why I don't have to go around proving it 24 hours a day. You trying to start something with me? I think it's already started, Sutter. As long as you can find your attack on me to talk, I wasn't greatly concerned. But I don't like being shot at from ambush. What do you mean, shot at? When was this? Last week, Marshal. Maybe Sutter can tell you more about it. You claiming I tried to shoot you in the back? As a matter of fact, my back was turned. 
Odd that you knew. I've never even been near that shack of yours. I think you're a liar, Sutter. Too bad you ain't wearing a gun when you say that. Suppose you take yours off. You outweigh me 20 pounds. That ought to be fair or enough maybe for you. you're scared of guns, is that it? You're right. I am scared of guns. <laughs> I've seen too many of them not to be. Like I said, Marshal, just a sheep herder that likes to read books. Roll. You keep away from my boy, you hear me? Any friend who comes to my door is welcome, and that includes Packy. And another thing, Sutter. From tonight on, I'll be wearing a gun. I'm mighty glad to hear that. Mighty glad. I'll believe it when I see it. Oh. You better get somebody to learn you how to load it. Marshal, that boy ought to be taken away from him. Now, that'd be pretty hard to do, Jason. The law gives him a lot of leeway where his own family is concerned. In fact, he's a good youngster. But his father is killing the spirit in him. He may do more killing than that, Jason, if you give him a chance. By wearing a gun, you mean? No, Marshal. I'm afraid he's worked himself up to a point now where he'll try whether I'm armed or not. What started all this, anyway? Packy happens to like me. And I've talked to him and given him books to read. Leif's a cattleman and I run a few sheep. Maybe that's reason enough in itself. Yeah, maybe. Mostly, though, I think it's because he's scared. That's why he's always blustering, trying to cover up. And he knows I see it, so he hates me. And deep inside, he's scared of me, too. Yeah, that's possible. The worst enemy you can have in the world is a man who's scared of you. Yeah. I know that, Jason, but I wasn't sure you knew it. Strange-looking cadaver, all right. Oh, hand me that scalpel, uh, will you, man, please? Uh, is this the one you mean, Doc? Huh? Oh, yes, of course. Thank you, thank you. Hmm. You know, it's a fine way for a grown man to be spending his time, Doc, poking around on the inside of a dead prairie dog. It's a rare opportunity, man. Rare opportunity. No? The Hawkins kids brought me three of them this morning. Found them out south of town. Rare opportunity for what, Doc? Matt, how many dead prairie dogs did you ever see? Well, I... Come to think of it... Ah, that's just what I mean. A prairie dog's a tough little animal. Oh, they get killed by hawks and snakes, coyotes and so forth. But they don't just up and die. No, I guess not. Uh, uh, yeah? Come on in. Door's unlocked. Hi, Doc. Oh, well, uh, Packy. Come on in, Packy. I was looking for you, Marshal. Uh Oh? Chester said you might be up here. Oh, what can I do for you, son? Well, uh, nothing much, I reckon. I just wanted to talk, I guess. Yeah, go right ahead. I'm through here. Why don't you two talk out there in the front room while I kind of clean up in here? All right, Doc. Come on, Packy. You know, Marshal, Paul just wailed the daylights out of me. He was madder than a wet hen. Yeah. Well, maybe there won't be much more of that back here. You're about grown up now. Paul keeps saying he aims to be proud of me, make a man out of me. Maybe he just wants you to be everything he must be. Oh, Paul talks real loud, real bravo. But I don't think he is at all. Why does he hate Mr. Roll so much? I don't see nothing wrong with him. I like him. So do I. He knows things. He... <laughs> Most anything you think of, Mr. Roll knows about. And he tells you, so you know, too. Sure is a mighty big world the way he tells about it. Yeah, I guess it is. 
Dodge City ain't all of it, or the prairie. Bigger than that. And I aim to see for myself, learn all about it. Well, once you're grown up, I guess you can do about anything you want to, Peggy. Well, growing up's kind of hard to do sometimes, Marshal. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty hard. A lot of people never make it, Peggy. <laughs> Dylan, it just ain't nothing like a half dozen fried eggs to start a man off right in the morning. <laughs> yeah, I imagine a hog wakes up with pretty much the same feeling, Chester. Well, a good appetite is a sign of good health. Well, uh, then I'd say you're about the healthiest man west of St. Louis. <laughs> Sticks and stones can break my bones, but words might Mind if never... I join you, Marshal? Ah, oh, Jason, glad to have you. Sure, sit down. Morning, Chester. Hi, Mr. Roll. You're up and around early today, aren't you? I'm just going through town, as a matter of fact. I've got a timber cabin up in the Chiriwas. The snow is during the winter damaged it some. I'm going to spend a week putting it back in shape. Uh huh. I, uh. See, so you're wearing a gun. I meant what I said, Marshal. Well, now, Mr. O, wearing a gun is one thing, but knowing how to use it when the time comes is another. I'm familiar with guns, Chester. Tell me something, Jason. You've, uh. Led troops, haven't you? Why do you ask that? I, I'm not asking exactly. It's more a matter of guessing. Well, during the war of the rebellion, I served as a captain. 29th New York Volunteers assigned to the 7th Cavalry. Uh huh. Do me a favor, will you, Jason? If I can, Marshal. Stay clear of Sutter. Let me talk to him, huh? Let me see if I can knock some sense into his head. I have no intention of looking him up and calling him. But I doubt that'll make any difference, Marshal. He's like a blind mad bull, ready to charge anything that moves. Yeah, I'm afraid you're right. Marshal, I want to know what's happened to Packy. I ain't seen him. Morning, Sutter. You're behind this, you sneaking rat. It's just about time you... All right, hold it, Lane. Get your hand away from that car. Let him repent him. Let him go. No, sir. Give that. Give it. All right, settle down now. What's the matter with you, anyway? Becky. Becky's gone. Run away during the night. Well, I roll there. He knows he put him up to it. Have you seen Packy, Jason? Not since yesterday out there in the street when Sutter was trying to beat him half to death. You're lying. You're hiding him out somewhere. Sutter. Sutter, since you seem determined to force this, Watch. Hmm? Well, well, my goodness, that, well, that was the fastest draw I ever seen. My gracious. Marshal, I think I'll push on. I'll eat breakfast on the trail. I'll see you in about a week. Have a good trip, Jason. All right, Leif, there's your gun. If you know what's good for you, you'll keep it in its holster. You might as well keep a cell ready, Marshal. I'll kill him, no matter how fast he is. I don't think I'll bother with a cell, Leif. If you do try it, what you're going to need is a grave. Use a beer. Good. Sam, shuffle up a pitcher of beer, will you? Sure, Keith. Yeah, sit down, Matt. Ah, thank you. Say, so, hey, you got quite a crowd tonight. Yeah. Circle B bar herd came in about dark with 40 riders, and the current of herd about an hour later. I guess we'll be open all night. Yeah. Here's your beer, Kitty. Oh, thanks, Sam. Thanks, Sam. Put it on my house tab, will you? Sure. 
You know, I can't figure these trail drivers, Kitty. They work all winter long, make a 1,500-mile cattle drive, and then blow their whole wages in three nights. <laughs> One night, a lot of them. Then they have to borrow money to eat on until they head back to Texas. But I guess that's the way they like it. Yeah, I guess so. Found my boy yet, Marshal. No, not yet, Leif. Are you even trying? As much as I know how to. He hasn't been seen on any of the trails out of town. I check with everybody I can. Why don't you check with Jason Rowe? That's who he's gone with. You heard what Jason said this morning. He was going into the churro was. Be gone a week or more. And he took back you with him. I talked to the driver of the Pueblo stage this afternoon. He saw Jason Roll at Rhyolite Pass and he was alone. You're letting your hate twist your thinking, Leif. I wouldn't trust that Jason Roll no further, and I can see him. Well, that's up to you. But it seems to me your main concern ought to be your son, not your feud with Jason. It is. If anything happened to that boy, I'd... Marshal. You find Peck. You find him and fetch him back home. You hear me? I'll do what I can, Liv. You find him and fetch him back. Funny, Matt. How a person will let a hate get hold of him without any real reason that it's riding that way. Yeah. And ride him right into the ground more than often. Matt, you think Jason did help Packy run away? No, I think the boy just got tired of being cuffed around, that's all. No, but still, Leif worships that kid. Yeah, I suppose he does in his own way. It's like a jealousy, almost. Leif wants the boy to look up to him like he does to Jason. Well, we'll never get him to do it by slapping him in the head. <laughs> well, I guess we can't solve everybody's problems, Matt. No, I gave that up a long time ago. <laughs> Mr. Dillon. Huh? Oh, what is it, Chester? Looks like maybe we kindly got took in by Jason Rowe. Oh, well, what do you mean? Well, it appears like he didn't go to the chair was after all. I, I reckon he must have circled back. What? Well, a homesteader just came in from out that way and said there's a light in Jason's cabin. He's lied to us, Mr. Dillon. Well, we better go out and see him before Sutter finds out. He already has. He heard about it the same time I did. And he just this minute took out of here like a big-footed bird. All right, let's go, Chester. Jason's cabin's just around the bend there, Mr. Dillon. Still ain't no sign of Suddy. Oh. We must have passed him somewheres on the way out. I uh, may be. Well, it looks like that homestead I was telling the truth, Chester. There's a light in the cabin there. Not sure by golly, the shore is. Well, this ain't the first time I've been wrong about a man. Yeah, but Jason's not the kind of lie. Let's leave our horses here. All right, sir. He would have had plenty of time to circle back, though, even if he was seen at Rye Light. I guess so. All right, let's go. It is kind of disheartening, though, ain't it? When you figure a man oh, lied to you. I know you're in there, Rolf. There, Sutter, over there in the brush. Come on, you rotten coward. Late. Hold it. Look, somebody's opening the cabin door. Get out of the light. Get away from that door. Shot him, Mr. Dillon. Shot him, Sutter. Shot him down in cold blood. Maybe he isn't dead. Let's go see. Marshal, tell him, Lake. Put down that rifle. We're going to the cabin. Sure, Marshal. I got no trouble with you. Fired from ambush without giving him no chance at all. Here, give me a hand, Chester. Help me turn him over. Maybe there's a little chance he's still over. Mr. Dillon. Yeah, it's just what I thought. I'll take my medicine, Marshal. 
But I don't reckon a jury will go too hard on a man for shooting somebody that kidnapped his son. Life, I told you that hate was going to twist your thinking. Jason Roll is somewhere on the churro was. Huh? Are you telling me that this ain't Jason? Blackie. was a good shot, Leif. One bullet right through the heart. Your son never knew what hit him. Now our star, William Conrad. You know, the frontier was a great half circle with one end anchored in the Dakotas and the other in Texas. And through this ran a score of passageways to the west. Trails like the Santa Fe, the Overland, the Bozeman, the Goodnight. Well, next week, our story centers around a band of people traveling west on one of these trails. and directed by Norman MacDonald. Stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. Featured in the cast were Parley Bear as Chester, Howard McNear as Doc, and Georgia Ellis as Kitty. George Walsh speaking. Join us again next week for another specially transcribed story on Gunsmoke. This is the United States Armed Forces Radio and Television Service. 